Right, everybody, we are back and we are recording, so keep it tidy. Welcome to uh, uh, not so chilly Friday morning. Today we're talking about commission, and on the screen you'll see your favorite uh, action hero. And before that, and after that, though, we, this is where commission comes from. So uh, commission isn't um, something that's just earned because you, you, uh, you've done a transaction. There are specific rules that surround how commission can be earned and why it can be earned. And these need to be followed, otherwise you don't get it. It's quite simple, I'm gonna put you over there. So uh, the EAB's code of conduct makes provisions for this. And it says that you can earn commission only in certain circumstances. The first one being that you sign an offer, you do a lease and all the suspensive conditions have been met. Okay, and the suspensive conditions, as you know, are stuff like, uh, subject to bond or that. So you can't get any money from anybody unless the, the, the suspensive conditions are met. The next one is the resolutive conditions. Who knows what a resolutive condition is? Shone, you owe me a cup of coffee. I've beaten her. You don't know? A lacquer. Okay, a resolutive condition is something that say, part of the agreement is like, it's a suspensive condition, but it's slightly different. It says, like the example I've used there is, if the lease, if the tenant dies, the lease is cancelled. Do you understand? So, and that, so you don't have, so that you can insert things into the agreement that then they, therefore terminate it. So you can't, you can't actually claim commission if the resolutive conditions haven't been met, unless you have good cause. So if you have a, a, a lease and you want your commission and it says they um, subject to the resolutive condition that if the tenant dies, then you won't, you know, then then the lease is cancelled. You are still entitled to commission there if you reduce it to writing and everybody understands it. Okay, so that's quite, quite normal. Commission can't be claimed if you're precluded by law. So if you don't have the FSC or by the EA, EAAB. So if there's something in law that precludes you from earning it or you don't have an FSC, that means you can't earn commission. Simple as that. Okay, this is a quite an important one. No agent may, number, number D. No agent may introduce a buyer to a property unless, if the buyer has been uh, introduced by another agent. Now we get that a lot, where the buyer says, oh, but I've been to that property with another agent, but I don't want to work with him. So the code of conduct is very clear. It says you will not, you may not take the person there unless you inform the seller. And that's what we do. So you put it in the agreement as a suspensive special condition that the seller notes that he has the, 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 the buyer has viewed this property before and has chosen not to work with those agents and wants to view it again and wants to do a deal again. And our, our agreement makes provision for a double commission claim that it's not our problem. But the point is that you have to sensitize the seller to the possibility of a double commission claim. Okay. Uh, you're not allowed to claim commission without regard to whether the purchaser is financially able to conclude a deal. So you can't claim commission if the guy can't get a bond or, you know, you can't say, well, you signed the agreement and therefore you're subject to a bond and now you've got a bond and now I want my commission, but knowing then the guy lost his job and couldn't get a bond. So there's no commission during that situation. And of course, we can't take money from trust. So guys, when you sign a deal and you ask for advances, it's very difficult for us that we lend money out of our pockets to you if for deals that are with our attorneys that we choose, because we can't take monies out of the trust account of the of the of the seller or the buyer. Why? Because the seller and the buyer, remember, are uh, the, their money is in trust and it's sacrosanct. Nobody may touch that money. Okay. And any questions on that? It's very simple. Okay, what does our OTP say? So we know you know, under what circumstances we can claim the commission. Now, what does our agreement say? Our agreement talks about a professional fee of seven and a half percent plus that. And it's in yellow, payable by the seller to us upon registration of transfer. So that's the first milestone. It's got to register, you get paid. The green one is would have been deemed to be earned by the signature of the agreement and the fulfillment of the suspensive conditions. So it is earned by us as soon as the bonds approved, as soon as all of these agreements are, are in place, but it's only paid to us once the pro property is registered, okay? And the other one, the, the blue one, should the agreement be cancelled as a result of breach, we are still entitled to our commission and who pays it? 
the person who caused the breach. Okay, but that's a very difficult thing. I can't find an attorney who's willing to fight for commission when guys pull out of deals and that. It's just too expensive. Under about, um, I think it's 200,000 Rand, that's a magistrate's court matter. Up to 400,000 Rand is a district court and over 400, I think is a high court matter. But the problem is you're going to have to have um, specialized legal input from an advocate to do something like this. And it's going to cost an enormous amount of money. So we typically just walk away from bad deals and say, to, if the guy wants to pull out, you pull out, you move on. We're a volume based business, so be volume based. Let's get moving and get done. Okay. That's all easy. We know all of that. So how do we calculate commission? Some of you guys don't understand this, so let's just look at it quickly. If the selling price is 1 million rons and the commission is 5%, excluding VAT, remember that our agreement talks about 5 or 7.5 or a percentage plus VAT. So the VAT is not for us to take. So how do we calculate this VAT? We just take the 5.5%, the, the we work out a figure and we times it by 1.15 is a simple way. Or you times the 5.5 by 1.15 and you get an including VAT amount of 6.33%. Yes, you all understand that. So the, the initial commission is 55,000 Rand on a million, but the actual commission that we receive is 63,000 Rand because there's a VAT component to it. Now, when you guys calculate your VAT, your uh, COM, please be sure that you're using the, the VAT list, the pre-VAT, the ex-VAT amount, because we don't get to take the VAT home. Okay. Well, I think we all understand that. That's quite simple. So there's nothing, there's nothing, nothing difficult about this. If you don't understand how to do this math sum, you're going to not pass your NQF4 because they ask you to calculate your commissions. And you have to phone somebody, phone a friend, or go to the loo and write it on the back under your shoe that you take the amount and times it by 1.15, and that gives you the including VAT. And if you want to know what it is excluding VAT, you just divide the amount by 1.15. Okay. Simple. Questions? No. Let's move on. Simple. Okay. So now we've got the amount of money. We know how we can earn commission in terms of the code of conduct because of our professional status. And remember that the code of conduct governs us. And just on the code of conduct, we spoke about this before. Remember that we are obliged to behave ourselves in terms of the code of conduct. So we're not a man on the street. Whenever we're interacting with clients and there's money and there's a professional agreement in place, you are acting, you are beholden unto the, the code of conduct because that's what you've agreed and that's what you've signed. And that may gives you FFC. If you don't want to be a good oak and you don't want to uh, get commission and you don't want to behave and be ethical and and uh, professional and kind and not swear and exclaim and shout, then don't sign the code of conduct and you won't get your FFC. So the board's very clear about that, okay? So what does our contract say there? So all the commission, that 55,000 Rand, which is the X VAT amount, lands in my bank account. And then you guys phone me that morning at seven o'clock and say, hey, I believe the money's paid, give, it, give me my share. Okay, well, it takes a bit of time to clear and it takes a bit of time to work out. So we normally do it within 24 hours. I think we're very good at that. Uh, but if we get it wrong, you do remind me. So thank you for that. So how do splits work? Well, a rookie, that means that you've never been in the industry before. You're, on a, you're actually on a 70-30, but you only get 50% of it. Why? Because 20% has to go to your mentor because you need a mentor and the company gets 30%. So you get 50%. The mentor gets 20 and the company gets 30. Okay, that's a normal rookie. You're a rookie until you sort of hand in your logbook and then you, be, you, you can start earning more commission. But I'm not, worried, I'm not going to talk about the kind of splits. This, this is the very basic splits. The, what is important is that you're an intern agent until you write your PDE. So our longest record uh, uh, rookie or intern agent, I think was Kathy Moore, <laughs> for some... Or only the board understood reason was a rookie for uh, intern for eight and a half years. I'm pleased to announce that she is qualified into an agent now, now knows everything. But if you're an intern and you still to write your PDE, you're still on 50 50 because you still need a mentor and the company still gets 30. There's no change there. Okay, because the, somebody's got to mentor you. So if you're 
and there are amongst you that are have been agents for longer than uh, intern and we have agreed that the mentor doesn't take the 20 percent so uh, i would maybe act as your mentor and if you're competent and i trust you then i won't charge you the 20 percent. so that's an agreement you make with your mentor once you're a full status agent that means you've put, written your pde and passed it then you get 80 percent there's no mentor and the company gets 20. okay it's very simple so those are the splits and there are differences in between and you've got to just talk to linda and i and discuss where you think you should be but remember that the mentor is a real thing and the mentor has to it takes uh, responsibility for you and has to do some work for you so that you're not going to get a mentor to act on your behalf unless you pay them okay right no questions there that's easy okay so let's calculate your share of the commission so we know how to earn commission we know what the agreement says the commission amount is and uh, so the money gets paid into our trust account and there we received uh, 63,250 rand because it's a million rand sale and because it's um, there's VAT included then we exclude the VAT so we divide it by 1.15 there's the sum and we get 55,000 rand now if you're on an 80-20 split as you should be because remember, all you have to do to get 80-20 is hand in your logbook, do your NQF4 and write the exam. You can literally do it in a month, okay? But uh, some of you don't choose to earn 80% and you prefer to be on 50. Uh, and that's amazing, but I don't know. I don't know why you do that, but well done. Um, so the agent share is 80% and the company share is 20%. So all you do is 20% or 55 is 11,000 and you get 44. That's a good deal. Okay, now this is where you guys go crazy because you, you've done the sum in your heads. You go 80 times 55 because you're not good at maths and you go 80, 8 times 5 is 40 and 8 times 5 is 40. So that's 44,000 Rand. And then you get paid. You go, but Anton, I didn't receive 44,000 Rand. What have you done with all my money? Okay, and that, here's the answer here. You don't take home 44. Why? Because there's a small thing called advances that some of you uh, choose to take. And there's another thing called marketing and boards and you buy cards and you wrap your cards, cars and you buy magnets and you buy all sorts of flags and stuff. And I say to you, that's fine. I'll pay for it until your next deal and then I'll take it off. And then there's a small matter of PAYE. Now, you mustn't get angry at me at, with PAYE because I don't get to control PAYE. I give it away lovingly because if I don't, I'm going to go to jail. So PAYE is a, a tax that you pay the government. It's simply your, um, your pay, PAYE, pay as you earn. And that we are obliged to take 25% on it. So here's the example. On a commission of 44,000, tax at 25% is 11,000 South African rand. There's a deduction here, if it, uh, put here, a deduction, let's say you bought some business cards and you bought something else, and then net to use 32. So you were expecting 44, but you only got 32. That makes sense. I mean, that's very simple. Okay, so you should always take into account the deductions, please. Otherwise, you get freaked out and you get semi-rude messages. And then I look at them at six o'clock in the morning and I, I laugh a little bit and send them back a message saying, you forgot about the tax or you forgot about the VAT. Well, you forgot about something else okay uh, that doesn't stop me making mistakes in your commission though so i appreciate it when you also correct me with that the uh, just the one thing on tax this tax rate of 25 percent is not cast in stone that tax rate of 25 percent can be something else and it can be 20 percent it can be 20 18 percent it can be any number that you you and your friends at the receiver of revenue choose so if you are at 25 percent and you would prefer to get another tax rate, simply uh, send uh, Cheryl a message saying, I want to pay less tax, and she will hook you up with a crowd in uh, Thunderbell Park, actually, who are our accountants, and they're called AEP. And I think for about four or 500 Rand, they will get you a tax directive that needs to be renew renewed every year. And the tax directive will reduce that probably to 18% if you're a, a good looking fellow like most of you are. Uh, but if you're a little bit older, it'll probably be 20%. And if you're a big spender, if you're a, a, somebody who's making a lot of commission, they'll probably leave it at 25%. But I mean, you can get around it. Okay. Just remember, if you change your tax rate, you probably get, get less tax back at the end of the year when you do your claim. But it is a better way. Get your tax directive and pay 18%. It helps your cash flow. It's a better way. Right. 
So now you've got your commission. But it's not what you think because now there's these corrections. Now you guys froth at the mouths when you hear there's a correction. Okay, now I want to explain to you from my uh, point of view why these, um, why these corrections are wonderful and why you should love them. And the reason is that the, um, the, the first thing is that it's in your agreement. So we've agreed that I will pay you 80% of the commission based on one thing, that you do one sale every 60 days. I, and that's not an unreasonable. So if you don't do a sale in 60 days, your 80, 20 simply goes to 70, 30. Okay. Now that's, uh, uh, that's by agreement. That's the, and that's the reason that you can earn 80%. But why? You say, but why, Anton, why? Why this dastardly correction? Well, the answer is obvious. Because I would carry on providing infrastructure based on projected income and fees. So the offices that we're in, Cheryl is sitting there, Madeleine is doing rentals, Linda, very expensive part of our business, and all the other stuff that we do is, um, has to be paid for and we have to budget for it. So I'm in this building and I've decided that we've got agents and they all agreed to pay to do one deal every 60 days, which is not a lot. Your contract actually says one deal every month, but 60 days is where we do this correction. So we base our infrastructure on these costs. And then if I don't earn the money, I'm in a big tough place. Remembering, of course, this little sum here, where your split of the commission is 44,000 rand and I get 11. Of that 11, that figure of 11, I still have to pay franchise fees of six, now to be 7%. Okay, so you take another uh, 6,000 rand, 6% uh, 6 of that off there every time. I'm actually only not earning 20%, I'm earning 14%. Okay. So those are these big, big numbers that come off here. So one thing is costs. And I can't change support staff. So I can't tell you, Cheryl, sorry, Cheryl, just go home. I'm going to pay you this month because uh, five of the agents have gone on leave and three of them have decided to, they're not working. I mean, it's patently not possible to do it like that. So we have to do, we have to depend on each other. I depend on you to work because that's what you said you would do. And you depend on me to have the infrastructure. So when things go wrong and the emails don't work this morning, you know, we get on it straight away. We find the right people. The infrastructure is there. It gets fixed and we have the money again. Right. So that's the easy one because I think everybody understands that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is where you're really going to touch your hearts. So I want you to look at me with some kind of affection now and listen carefully to what I'm saying. Because now why are we correcting to 5.5%? What is this monstrous correction that we keep pulling out of the head? And so before we discuss why we're doing it, I just want to point out that it doesn't matter why we do it because everybody does it. So Sotheby's, Remax, Pam Golding, everybody correct, corrects to a minimum percentage. Some of them at five, some at 5.5, some at six, it doesn't matter because that's the agreement. That's what they need to earn to make a living. So why do we correct? Okay, and why do you like it? I know you like it because this is why. There's the first reason. It's agreed. It's what you put in your agreement. It's in your contract. So what, when you sat down with us, the first day, you said, not only am I going to sell one property a month, and if you, I don't, every two months, you can make it 70, 30, but to earn 80%, I will pay you at 5.5. It's not about you. It's about us. So I can then budget again. It's agreed to. We all understand each other. So what do I do for that? Well, I've got to provide the infrastructure. So we provide infrastructure to support all agents based on an amount of income. That income can't vary too much because if it varies too much, I don't have, I, my budget doesn't work. Okay, and the margins are thin. We need big turnover, we need high volumes, and we need 5.5%. Our office support is based on these fixed costs. So the reason we've got the, the shells, the computers, the IT infrastructure, the, the marketing, everything that we do, it costs us 200, 250,000 rand a month to run this business. That money's got to come from somewhere and it needs to be budgeted for. Okay, so it's obvious that we can't change support staff, rent, office rent, IT systems, marketing on a fluctuating basis. That kind of model is that there is a model for people who don't want to do this. And I think it's called EPS or something like that. And it's a completely virtual model. So you get no support, no training whatsoever. All you do is you use the IT system and that's it, full stop. So there, 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 there is an alternative, but that's not what we do. You know, we need to, we've got the, we've got the people in the support system as well. This is where it starts getting um, sort of 
I wouldn't say tricky, but I would, this is where I think the real truth lies in this 5.5. Remember that the decision to discount commission is entirely yours. And our top four performers reach 5% and 5.5% quite regularly. In fact, often. I know our top best performer probably hits 5%. They don't because their market doesn't recruit it. I mean, doesn't kind of want it. But the national average is about 5.4%. So there is no reason for us not to get to 5.5 other than your own decision. And it's quite difficult if you're a, a irregular seller and you get to a one property in four months or six months and somebody says to you, I'll only pay you 100 grand commission. Then the first thing you do is you look at me and say, hey, I don't want you to correct. It's not fair. You know, this is a hard decision. And I'm going, I understand that, but it doesn't change my costs. So not only haven't you sold for six months, I've had to carry you for six months and have all the infrastructure available for six months. And now you've made the decision to, to re reduce your commission. I'm not forcing you to. And uh, if you talk to some of the, 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 the top performers, they walk away from commission. And if you want to know what to say to an agent, speak to Rob, uh, Rob Pound and ask him what he says to people who offer him 3%. But, he, but please, Rob, tell them the sanitized version. I keep it tidy. But there's not, you know, we don't, a proper professional agent won't work for less. It's like going into BMW and say, listen, I'll give you 200 grand for this million rand car. You know, that's what I think it's you're worth. You're not going to get it. And if, if professional agents act professionally, then you've got a good chance of getting the, the commission that you deserve and that you should get. Discounting commission is a perilous downward slope. And you can quote me on this, you are going to be the author of your own peril. Why? Because if everybody discounts and doesn't walk away, you are going to crush your own income and it's going to be harder and harder. And there's quite a lot of pushback in the market. The, the other agencies don't discount willy-nilly. You think they do. Everybody tells me they do. But the national average across the country is at 5.5%. So that tells me Pam Golding in your area may do it. One person's making a bad decision. Nationally, they don't do that. Okay. Right. Number six. It gives you the freedom to make decisions on the spot. Remember, we're a partnership. So what you can't do is sitting in front of a client and say, hang on, on the phone, Anton, Anton, this guy wants to give us 2%. What do you think should be negotiated? It's your decision. Make the decision. So you can make it on the fly. You don't have to consult with me. But remember, you're not negotiating for me. I'm going to get paid on my way. You, another important point is your commission can never go before, below 50-50. And 50-50 is actually a good commission. Those of us with gray hair, if you look around on that screen, uh, I know Rob came out of Pam Golding at, uh, for many years earning 50-50. Yeah, and even not even earning 50-50, Rob. I think you said you earned 40 at, at, for the first year or two as you trained. So this 80% model that we've introduced, Property Coza, has destroyed the market because everybody thinks that 80% is the right way and now you uh, and we must give more. There's no more to give. At 80%, there is no more to give. The only exception, guys, is the new developments. If it's a new development, and please don't tell me that you're selling one unit in a three block. That's not a new development. I'm talking about a thousand units. There we have to negotiate that. It's like a commercial building. Commercial we negotiate because the commercial can be done on a sliding scale as well. Why? Because you can't get 5.5% when you're selling a 48 million rand building. We all understand that and it, it, it's on a glide slope. Okay. I hope that makes a little bit of sense for you. Let's have a look at the effect now. So now this horrible Anton is correcting at 5.5%. What a monster. What an absolute terrorist. Can't believe it's possible. And you can rant and rave until you do this sum. So let's have a look at the sum. Yeah, the sales price is a million rand. The commission's at 5.5. So it's 55,000 rand. X that. You get 80, 44,000. Company gets 11. Company pays 6% of that away because we have to pay franchise fees. Easy. Now, let's say that you are somebody who works at 5%. The net commission is 50. That's what it is. And the agent should get 40 and the company should get 10. But no, I correct to 5.5. So the corrected amount is I get what I would have got in this scenario here on this side of the coin. That's what the correction means. I get it as if it was 5.5%. So I get 11 still and you get 39. So for you to have the pleasure of getting 80%, for having the freedom to make your decisions, to be part of the infrastructure, it's cost you a thousand rand on a million rand deal. 1,000 South African rot. 
Hey, how did that happen? Somebody drew on my screen. Okay, so it's a thousand rand. So it's not a it's not a large amount of money, and yes, a thousand rand is a lot of money, but is it really in this in 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 light of the forty thousand rand that you're earning and we're earning ten? So it's thirty nine eleven costs you a thousand rand. Okay. So let's look at this. After you've uh, sorry about these lines, I have no idea what they are, how they got you. I wonder what that's about. Very interesting. Okay, can you see this commission schedule? Okay, so this is the schedule that we uh, painstakingly send you guys. And um, I've, this one's yeah. What all we do is we change the stuff in the yellow. So it's a thousand hundred um, burr, hundred million rand sale. Yes, that would be nice. But a million rand sale. Uh, the total commission, including that, there is sixty-three. You see it. And it's at 5.5%. The commission, external commission, that means there's somebody else getting some. So let's make that zero. There's no external commission. So then this is where we make our first decision. Have you made a sale in 30 days? Yes or no? Yes, you have. Good. Here's a 20%. I get 40, I get 11, you get 44. And that's your commission on the schedule that I send you every time I make a payment. Remember though that we have to take tax off. And your net income is then 30, 33, and there are deductions. So let's say you took 750 rands of the boards, and we would take that off. So that there would be minus this. And then you would get paid 32,000. Okay, so these things are look, they look horrifically complicated, but they're actually not. They're just simple mathematics. And if you get into trouble with them, you can phone me and I'll explain it to you. Okay. That's it. That's how commissions work. We know how, we know why, we know who's paying us, we know the, the conditions under which we get them. Um, and we know the splits and we know why 73 is awesome. So we are now got 42 seconds left. Have a nice day. It's nice to see your smiling faces and uh, go and sell some houses. Lovely.